This is Shondell Joyce, and join me for a demonstration and painting farm in the foothills. First, I start off with my reference photo, and I adjust it for composition. This particular reference photo doesn't seem to fit, so I'm cutting off part of it, cropping it. What I like about it is the golden curve. This is a concept, if you Google it and read a couple of uh, entries on Leonardo da Vinci and the Golden Curve, you'll understand why it's important. But I'm going to use it to enhance my composition in this painting. Uh, I'm also paying attention to the values, making sure that the darkest dark is in the foreground. This is a value sketch that I do ahead of time, always. I start off with markers and grayscale, and I do five values. This makes sure that my darkest darks come forward and that everything else in the composition plays off of these intense darks. So I also use the rule of thirds which are the lines that divide the composition into thirds, both horizontally and vertically. Where the lines intersect, I want to make sure I'm keeping my focal areas. I don't put anything dead center that's important. Second, I do a color study. The color study helps me to translate the values into color. It also helps me lay out the palette. So I may have thousands of pastels, but I'm only going to use a handful in this painting. I'm never sure which ones will make it into VIP seating, which is pictured here, until I do the color study. So that's how I decide. I also work on ampersand pastel board. In this case, I'm opening up a fresh pastel board and I'm going to sketch those same rule of thirds lines directly on the surface. I'm using a hard pastel, and as you can see, I'm eyeballing. I'm not measuring. I'm just making a rough guesstimate of where those lines would intersect. I don't need the full line, just the intersection. Next, I'm paying attention to the composition in the reference photo and lightly sketching the diagonal line of the hill. It's a very gentle diagonal line, and it is crossed by an opposite diagonal line in the background. This creates a beautiful division of the picture plane. Next, I'm putting in the driveway which is almost always at a much sharper angle than I think it is. So I'm sketching it first and getting an idea of that golden curve. <clears throat> there are several layers in, of darks in this composition, so I want to make sure I get the darkest darks in the foreground and that the shapes of the grasses are even thicker. Next comes the barn. I'm using the side of this hard pastel to help me sketch the geometric shape of the barn. Notice that the barn intersects the, the two important lines in the rule of thirds. So it's a focal point. I want to make sure that I get that barn situated so that it pulls your eye to the curve and creates a golden curve effect. I start by putting the center support of the barn in place. That center line helps me to build the barn around it. Um, normally I would probably use a piece of string and set up a vanishing point and make sure all my lines were parallel. With this composition, it isn't that detailed. It's not that crucial. So I'm eyeballing it, and I'm using values more than anything. I notice that the edge of that angle 
is a little more intense in my painting than it is in the reference photo. That's okay. In Texas, we tell tall tales. We're prone to exaggeration. As artists, it's up to us to make a more interesting painting, not to faithfully reproduce a photograph. Uh, next, I'm putting in the distant hills. I'm making sure that they're very light and that they are intersecting the first line at an angle. The marks I'm making help to further the sense of perspective with bigger, thicker marks in the grass in the foreground and thinner, less defined marks in the background. Uh, the vertical lines and big dark shapes are cast shadows under the grass. Already, you get a sense of perspective just from the sketch. It's good to start off with a strong sketch. It'll help you immensely to get the whole painting if you have a good, strong sketch, even though it, the sketch will disappear as soon as you start painting. At least you know where all of the main components will be. First color I'm using is pure black. Take a deep breath, pick up the black, and put it down as an underpainting. Now, black tends to be a dull, dead color, so I use it first mainly for the values, so that way I know where my darkest dark will be. The black is the five value. Here, I have put it strongly in the foreground so that the road and the grasses really jump forward. I'm not going to put anything as dark as this in the background. So these marks in the front really stand out. They come forward. Anything in the background is going to be one step lighter. So now I have my fives in place. The fives are my darkest darks. I work from light, which would be a one, to dark, which would be a five. I try to get at least five values in every painting. Most often I go for nine, but if you get at least five, you get the illusion of realism. Next, I'm moving to a darker, warmer version of uh, five, which is like a dark chocolate brown. This beautiful, rich, warm color is not quite as dark as the pure black, but it's a good dark to work into some of the dirt on the road, some of the shadows. It's a warm color. So I'm going to have to go over these shadows with something cooler later. I'm putting some of the ruts in the road, which look like they were made by a horse-drawn carriage. And I'm using the same dark in the background to help pull your eye. You don't want to put a color in one place on a painting. Instead, work it through the whole composition. Where else can it go? In this case, I'm using it to draw your eye from the for foreground to the background. So it's going to be my dark on the side of the barn and on the eaves. I'm also going to work a little bit of it into the grasses. Already, you can tell how that helps to increase the sense of perspective. So I have my fives in place. These are my two main darks. Next is a four. This four is a greenish gray. And I'm using it to help lay in some of the under painting of the greens. So this greenish gray is a dark green. It's a shadowy, cool green. And it's a pattern that connects all of the darks in one place. The next is a reddish four. This is the color of the barn. So I'm gonna cover in the whole face of it and bring that color into the dirt in the foreground. It needs to be one step lighter and warmer. So I'm putting a warmer pinker color 
where the light is hitting the face of the barn. Next, I'm using a hard pastel just to sharpen some of those architectural edges on the barn and make them stand out. Also, to create some small architectural details like windows and doors, this moves us to the threes. The first three is the intense blue that's up in the sky. The sky is always darker towards the top, lighter towards the bottom. So I'm putting that blue on the top and then reflecting it on the roof. We may think of the roof as being whitish or lightish or even silvery, but it's reflecting the sky. Uh, next is a color that's more of a middle value. I'm hitting the threes now. This is a peach color. It's the color of the dirt in full sun. I'm using it as an underpainting in the grass. And for the grass itself, I'm using a warmer and a cooler version. Cooler version, they're both the same value, but one has a little more blue in it. It's for the distant grass. It helps to push it back, make it a little more icy, cool. The warmer version has a little more yellow in it. And as you can see, even though the two are very close in value, the warmer version really jumps forward. It's a greenish gold color. Uh, that gold just pushes it right to the foreground. Warm colors come forward, cool colors recede. That's a good rule of thumb. I will integrate the two a little more later. Not too worried about details at this point. Next, I'm using a flesh tone to help shape the light parts of the road. The road gets lighter as it goes back. So the flesh tone, the peach color, helps to lighten that path towards the middle ground, furthering that illusion of perspective. I'm going back to the grayish green and I'm using it to make some very long side strokes with the pastel and create some cast shadows in the grass. This helps with the mark making the shadows are now cooler because of the green. Uh, I had put some brown on there earlier, so the green helps to cool them. And I'm creating some really beautiful texture and marks in the foreground. So you can see more individual strokes of grass close up, less as you move back. Now I've got everything pretty much laid in. So it's time to get into some of the details. The block in is finished. Now for the details. Next detail I'm going to make is the color temperature of the greens. I have a warm green, a, a medium green, and a cool green. I'm using the medium green to tie in the two greens. We already have the cool green in place, already have the warm green. So the medium green just helps to transition between those two and make it look more lifelike. I'm putting it towards the middle of the composition as well, especially on the shrub that's close to the barn, and to help break up the solid mass of the grasses. I'm using the grayish green for the distant hills and to put a little more texture in the foreground. Now the grasses have a nice sense of perspective to them. And I'm going to start working on the warmest parts of the grasses. This is yellow. It's more of a cadmium yellow medium. Very, very warm. And putting this yellow on some of the grasses pops them and makes them come forward. I'm not going to just use that yellow on the grass. I'm also going to pop a little bit of it into the road and see how it looks like the road is suddenly warmer and the sun is falling on the road just like it's falling on those grasses. So the road wraps around through the composition and comes forward just with the addition of a little bit of yellow. Warm colors come forward, cool colors recede. I'm breaking up some of the cast shadows with some of the color from the road, making some interesting marks, defining some of the shadows a little more. Now it's more interesting. You get a real feel 
for the shadows. There's texture on the road. Mark making here is crucial. I have a cooler version of that lemon yellow and I'm working it onto the top parts of the grasses. That cooler version is only cooler because there's a touch of blue in it that makes it more of a neon green color. And that helps to break up some of the grasses and create uh, a, a feel for the yellow as being a little different on one part of the grass than the other. I'm flipping my painting upside down so that the dust from the sky doesn't fall onto my dark areas and pollute them. I'm using a very light color for the horizon. This is a, a light greenish color actually. It reads as white in the camera but there's a little touch of greenish yellow to it. Almost all the colors I'm using are Mount Vision, unless they're smaller and more square, in which case they're new pastels, which are hard. On top of that lighter color, I'm putting a medium transition color for where the sky transitions from light at the horizon to darker in the center. Um, the clouds are reflecting some of the earth color. So I'm using some of the flesh color from the road. Exact same color I put on the road earlier and reflecting that color up into the sky. Here's the lightest light and I'm using it to create long thin shapes for the clouds at the horizon. In the middle the clouds start to have a little more body to them and then the clouds directly overhead are fluffier, bigger shapes. And that also creates that illusion of perspective. When I flip the painting right side up, it starts to make a lot more sense. Again, clouds are an opportunity for mark making, just like those grasses. So I'm really paying attention to uh, the way I apply the pastel there. I want it to be a little different, have a little more texture, be a little more fun. Notice how smooth the clouds are towards the horizon and I'm touching them and blending them slightly just to push them back. In the middle ground, the clouds have a little more texture to them. I'm applying pastel to my finger and then blending and softening. And then the clouds directly overhead, lots more texture, lots more light, really laying it on thick with those clouds. and that perspective is enhanced by the mark making here. Different textures help to create that sense of perspective as well. Now the clouds, even though I'm using cl colors you wouldn't think of as being in the sky, they read as clouds. You get a sense of earth reflection on the bottom of the clouds and it furthers my composition. I'm breaking up some of the edges and shapes with a little bit of yellow and there you have it. It is pretty much finished. It's a simple painting using nice uh, warmer and cooler versions of the same colors. If you're not sure what that means, join me for my weekly online pastel classes. You can find them on my website, shondeljoyce.com. I'll see you soon. Thank you.